Hi everyone, it's Mrs. Moss here, and we're going to continue our energy discussion today and talk about the ways that energy can be transferred from one substance to another. So let's get started. The first thing to remember from our last video is that energy moves from regions of high concentration, which is known as the source, or where the energy comes from, to areas of low concentrations of energy. This is known as the sink. So we have a heat source where the energy comes from, and it will flow its energy into the heat sink. Now there are three ways this happens. The methods of energy transfer are, one, radiation. And we add the N with the little waves just to remind you that the radiation can move through space. It does not need a medium to help it get from one place to the other. It can move, as we said, through a vacuum, which is considered empty space. So uh, these are all of the electromagnetic waves that electromagnetic waves that come from the sun. Here's our electromagnetic spectrum, and again, this is all transferred from our sun through the means of radiation. Again, there is no medium for this transfer. Now, the examples that we can list are all of the energies that we have in our reference table on that electromagnetic spectrum. The gamma rays, the x-rays, the UV rays, visible light, infrared heat, microwave, and radio waves. These all travel through what we call radiation. And here's a picture of the sun coming down, shining its energy, and again that energy being radiated off the earth as infrared heat. Now in this picture, we have radiation occurring from the source, the fire, to the outside air and the girl. The, the, that would be considered the sink. It's moving from the high energy of the fire to the sink, the girl. Now, this is traveling through radiation. That's the way heat travels through the air. The second way that heat can be transferred is called conduction. And you'll notice that D is capitalized for a reason. And that is because conduction is the direct contact or touching of molecules. And then once those molecules touch, energy can be moved from one to the other. So energy potentially could be gone through my fingers. It has to have direct contact. And the best medium for this form of transfer is a solid, especially metal. So if you happen to put a spoon, a metal spoon, inside a boiling pot of water, okay, and it rested against the pot, the pot is hot and it will transfer its energy into the spoon. So if you go to take that spoon in your hand, it's gonna burn, because the heat had gone into that spoon. Now, now some examples of this, as I mentioned, are touching a hot surface, electricity, traveling through the wires, and also contact metamorphism, which is for between rocks and liquid magma, but we'll learn about that later. Here we have a molecular view. The rod or the stick that the girl is using to roast her marshmallow is being heated by conduction. The temperature of the fire is going through that rod and eventually her hand may get hot. The individual atoms are transferring heat in that rod from one to the other. So as you can see, it's hot on this end and the molecules within that stick collide making, giving the energy to the molecules that um, are on this side. So eventually, the molecules will continue to heat up. And if that girl is still touching it, it may actually hurt. The last form of energy transfer is, is called convection. And you notice those arrows going up for a reason. Now this is due to energy transfer within density differences. Remember what density is, the amount of molecules packed in a substance. So when you have differences in density, you can actually create energy transfer. And the best medium for this is through fluids, 
Now we consider fluids to be gases and liquids. Let's look at this a little more closely. For example, we have hot air or we have water rising. And that is because of the change in density of the air or the water. Volcanoes and lava lamps are actual examples of convection. And if we look at this diagram, you see the lava lamp. Now it's moving in a circular fashion. That's where those arrows came in on the convection V. Because what happens is as the heat or as heat rises, it changes the density within the air or the water, and then it becomes cooler as it goes away from the source and then it sinks again. So the changing densities due to the change of temperature within the liquid or within the air creates what we call a convection current or a convection cell and it creates this circular motion. Here you see an example of a heater uh, inside a house. Now the heater is the source of energy and it will rise uh, the warm air will rise above the heater and it will cool as it hits that area in the roof that hasn't been heated yet and it will eventually sink. So we have a circular pattern that gets created in your home. In this example we have a beaker set over a candle. Now the, the heat source is the candle so it's changing the density of the water that's directly over that heat source. This is getting warmer so the density will change and it will create a floating effect because the density will get less right there above the candle. Now if we look at our reference table and you see this page inferred properties of the Earth's interior, you will notice a convection current right underneath the Earth's crust in what we call the asthenosphere. These arrows represent the movement of the magma in that plastic mantle that changes densities as it heats up and it creates a convection current. We're going to talk more about that later. And here is water boiling on the stove. Now we have the heat source which is the stove and right here it creates a change in density because the hot water will lower the density so the water will go up and as it hits the cooler water on the sides it starts to sink. So it creates this boiling motion, this circular motion that we see when we boil water. And that's all for right now. We're going to continue our discussion of energy in another video on another day. So have a great day. Make sure you get all the notes down, and we'll see you next time.